So there'll be tests, and and, and there might even be tests that you don't envision. Teams get better, teams, um, right. as the season goes on. And a good morning, Birds fans. You got your Mac and Mac guys, John McMullen and Jody McDonald here with you on a hump day edition of uh, Birds 365, show number 366. We st start on our next grouping of 300 and uh, 365. We got to get uh, to 1,365 before we have that in the title again. Oh, shoot. I didn't even think of it that yeah. way. That sounds like a long way off, McMullen. That's a that's a that's a ways. We'll get that. I, I we'll don't even there. know if I'm going to still be upright at that time. <laughs> hey, I'm upright today. My 30 plus year old alarm worked no problems whatsoever. Even though I was on the air talking to Eagles fans till two o'clock in the morning last night on WIP, I am ready to roll. And I want to get your take on this, Johnny Mac, and my pal John Johnson put it to me this way when we did our crossover last night. More than 24 hours removed, because when you're in the you're in the moment, uh, you as a reporter at the game need to keep emotion out of it. But you're surrounded by it in the stadium and you can feel the, the pulse of uh, the link. Now that you take the emotion out of it, it's less so for a guy like yourself than it is just a regular fan, but you can't completely avoid it either. Any less impressive their beatdown of the Minnesota Vikings than it was when you and I were here 24 hours ago? No, it was an impressive win. Um, you know, I never get too high. I never get too low. I wasn't too low after the Lions game. I understood the environment. I understand the environment from the other perspective, so I don't get too high. I thought it was, a you know, when you look at it with, with the other team's glasses on, you, you start to say, all right, I thought that was a bad game plan, uh, and I thought the Eagles took advantage of it. Um, playing on the road, as we said, which I made a big deal out of in Detroit, but, you know, and it was a big deal. Um, you, you know, you start to look at it. But they didn't play well. So, to me, it was like this, you know, two ships passing in the night. The Eagles played well, and they didn't play well. So, you know, if, you, if, if two teams play well, then you say – you generally don't have blowouts and routes like that. Um, so you look at it from both sides of the spectrum. But I thought from the Eagles' perspective, look, I thought JG had a great game plan. I rewatched the game. Um, he took advantage of Garrett Bradbury, which I talked about all week. That was what the, the, the extra aggression was about. It was right up the middle almost all the time when he sent zero blitzes. And that's like, that's like looking at your opponent and saying, this guy we can take advantage of. And they did. Um, so I think, you know, fans get caught up in that. We always talk about the aggression. Well, you know, every week isn't like that. The week before, you had Frank Ragnow. was one of the best centers, even though he's banged up. So you can't do that. So to me, that kind of stuff is impressive. You're like looking at your opponent saying, boom, that's it. That's the weakness. Let's go get it. And the Eagles did a tremendous job with it. And then offensively, same type of thing. You know, you're practicing against the same coverage scheme week in and week out. So you know the ins and outs of it. You know the weaknesses. I think the Eagles guessed correctly. They're going to make the quarterback beat them from the pocket. And they had a good plan. They had a good plan for it. So I think the coaching staff did a wonderful job. Uh, both sides, um, special teams, maybe not as much. Um, and I thought it was an impressive performance. That hasn't changed. And good, good on the Eagle coaching staff for handling their business the way they did. Um, and I'll say this about Eagles fans while I say it about the 31 other fan bases in the National Football League. After a game is played, most people decide the game was played this way because of what my team did. Yeah, they, they don't exactly. factor the opponent in. Exactly. If, the, if the home team plays well, we won handily because we're great. If the home team gets beat or doesn't play as well as expectation, well, we played badly because well, we stink or we're not good enough or we have to improve in this area. They never factor in the opponent. No, 
Okay. Now, for me, oftentimes, I overfactor in the opponent, like week one. I didn't think Lions were going to be able to stay on the field with the Eagles. I just didn't think they had enough talent to go mano a mano with the Eagles, and they did. I undervalued the Detroit Lions coming into the game. In this past game against Minnesota, yeah, maybe I overvalued the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe I did give their offense a little bit more credit than they deserved. I think it's hard to not give Justin Jefferson credit, and Dalvin Cook's a pretty damn good player. You know my feelings about Kirk Cousins. He is the living definition of an average quarterback in the National Football League, and that's why I picked the Eagles to win. I just didn't have them winning as handily as they did and the defense playing as well as they did. Yeah, the – you need to have a balance when you're evaluating a game. You should use it before the game is played, but then you definitely have to use it after the game is played. It's not always about the hometown team. There is another team out there on the field and they have a lot to say about the outcome of any given game. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, in, in the case of, of, of Gannon, you know, he's kind of stressed that and, and people kind of snicker and laugh and he says it changes from week to week, but it does. It does. Uh, and, 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 he, and he deserves credit for it. Now, you can argue, all right, well, you know, you, you look at certain players, Jefferson's a perfect example. You know, you could play it safe or you could do what the Eagles did and say, all right, I got to weigh this um, and say, I have a really good corner. Maybe I can leave him on the Island at times against a great receiver because they have such a weakness in the interior of their offensive line. I'm going to get home. You know, you're going to get home. Look, if you're playing Jason Kelsey, to give Eagles fans an example, you're not going to say that. You're not going to say, "I'm going, I'm going to leave my great corner on an island because I can get home with an interior blitz." You're not going to say that. If you do say that, you're going to get beat. Right. Um, so it 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 really is uh, opponent dependent from week to week, and you know you'll have a new set of challenges uh, with the Washington Commanders and. Um, I think it'll be um, a little bit more difficult because I think division rivals sort of understand each other. Uh, they're so used to playing each other a little bit better and they'll have a better grasp of what Nick Sirianni is trying to accomplish offensively. So even though they have some issues, they lost their center. They have a good center, by the way, uh, but he's gone you know, on short-term injured reserve. Uh, so they're going to have some issues from that perspective. Chase Young's not there, so their defense has been struggling. But I think they'll have a better feel for what the Eagles do and what the Eagles want to do and what the Eagles do well. We just gave credit, rightfully so, to Jonathan Gannon had an outstanding game plan uh, coming in against the Vikings and implemented it uh, damn close to perfection. On the other side of the ball, I think we got to give a big nod to Shane Steichen. I think he's getting less uh, credit praise, whatever word you want to use to describe it, then maybe he deserves because here on Birds 365 and for me 30 plus years on WIP, every single year that I've been on the radio in the time, the run pass ratio. What's the run pass ratio? The Eagles need to do this. The Eagles mm -hmm. need to do that. It is always a topic. When I would, I, I would, if I had to do your job, Jody, I would have, I would have balked myself long ago that people keep talking about run pass ratio in it 2020. Has, where are we? 2022. 2022. And yeah. oh, by the way, when I got here in 1990, they were talking about run pass ratio. Um, so it hasn't changed. Shane Steichen has struck pretty close to the perfect balance in the first two games. And the people sung the praises of the Eagles last year. Little did we know Shane Steichen had more to do with it than we thought when the head coach turned over the play calling responsibilities to him. Uh, but right now the Philadelphia Eagles, despite the fact that they got AJ Brown, despite the fact that Jalen threw him, threw, threw it to him 122 times the first week of the season. Um, they're still number one in the NFC rushing the football yards per game. Numero uno. Now, a lot of that has to do with their very able running quarterback, but that counts as a rushing play. They're number one in uh, the run, and they're number two overall behind only Carson Wentz and the Washington yeah. uh, 
Commanders when it comes to total yards through the air. Carson number one, Eagles number two. Who can possibly complain about the balance that the Eagles have shown these first two weeks, Johnny Mack? When well, they need we, to run you, it, they you, run it. You, when you, they need to pass it, they pass. Yeah, well, it you know, I, I think Shane has done a good job. And here's where I'm going to temper things and people are going to get upset. Look, they 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 played very well against two probably going to end up bottom third of the league defenses. All right, that's number one. Um, at some point they're going to, and I can't tell you when, but at some point they're going to see a, a good defense in that. No, be no, no. All right. Well, I'm going to hold your hand, feet to the fire. When is that happening? Well, it's a good question. I'd have to pull up the schedule and yeah. I'll do that. But, uh, you know, they have an easy schedule. So maybe it doesn't happen, Jody. But whether, whenever it happens, when it comes, it might come in the playoffs. It's going to be, we saw it with Tampa Bay. Look, our buddy Jeff Kerr just tweeted out this morning. I'll give Jeff a uh, host of uh, Good Morning NFC East a little plug. He just pointed out the last five games for Jalen Hurts put up these amazing statistics, you know, how successful. Oh, you missed one, Jeff, though. You missed oh, one. Only talking regular season. Yes, huh? only talking regular season. You missed one. And Todd Bowles shut this offense down and shut That's Jalen Hurts down. And he shut him down dramatically. Look, but, uh, I'm there's not a – I think people forget, you know, and, and and that's why, you know, and we talk about statistics and you can put value on one statistic more than another statistic. Um, they're all skewed because you only face a certain number of really good teams that can give you an impact. And, and you tend to bloat those statistics when you're playing uh, a little bit lesser competition. And, you know, Maybe I'm wrong, but I think, as I said, Detroit and Minnesota are going to end up bottom third in the league in defense. We'll see if that shakes out. If they don't, maybe it looks more impressive down down the road. I I will say from the perspective of when you're putting up whatever it is, 470, 480 yards, but the Eagles have been playing, you know, when you're ahead 17, it's easy to keep that balance, you know. If you're down 17, if you get into a game when you're down 17, you're not going to have that balance. You you saw it again. Put on, look at it from the other team's perspective. You know, one of the things Detroit did well, and the Eagles acknowledged this, when they were down 17, they didn't abandon the running game. The Eagles expected them to, but they didn't abandon the running game. Uh, and and the Eagles got kind of uh, gashed a little bit by it. Um, Minnesota did exactly as expected. They abandoned the running game when they got behind, and it becomes easier when a team is one-dimensional and you see the Eagles teeing off and everybody loves it and the aggression. So you have to look at it under the perspective. Everybody looks good when you're playing from the lead, Jody. The, the difficult part is when you got to come back when you're down, when you're down two scores, um, you know, look at your guy Tua in Miami when you're down, can you come back? Can the Eagles win that type of game? I don't know if the Eagles can, win right. We don't know yet. You can't yeah. say they can't. No, I can't you, say they nor, can't, nor can you say, Oh, they'll be able to come back from you. Yeah. Right. That's a, that is still a, to be determined, but to uh, further your point, And again, there's two games. We're we're, we're trying to put a specific emphasis on something that is two games deep. We've just stated that we can't say with certainty that the Eagles will be a comfort buying team or not. Yes or no? We don't know. And I don't want to overjudge the first two games, but the barometer is the barometer. If you want to factor in what kind of a defense they were, how much they had to turn the roster over, stop me when you see a team that the Eagles are playing this year, the best defense in the NFL, at least yardage wise in the first two weeks of the season. 49ers. No bills. No Broncos. No Patriots. No bucks. I told you yesterday, the bucks defense. If you look at all the teams in the NFC, their offensive side, their defensive side, the best unit might be the bucks defense. So that's the first one. And yes, the Eagles may have to play them again. We know it's not going to come till January, uh, but they may have to play them again at some point. Dallas's defense is sixth in the NFL right now. 
Well, Micah Parsons, yeah, yeah Micah's going to be Micah, right? Micah, just... Micah, well, and Trayvon Diggs and Demarcus Lawrence. So, I mean, Demarcus usually struggles against Lane Johnson. Everybody tends to struggle against Lane Johnson, but they have it. They have splash players. They have players that can make plays on defense, and you know, Micah Parsons might be the best defensive player in football. Um, and I, you know, I, I shouldn't say that because Aaron Donald still exists, but I, I should put Aaron Donald off into a corner. Yeah, if, he's if, back seven of the, yeah. of the back seven in the NFL, yeah. he's the best player. Uh, he's really good is the point I'm trying to make. And yeah, he'll be a guy that will certainly be a test. Um, and you see him, if you watch the guy, it's amazing the impact he can have on a game. Um, so there'll be tests, and, and and there might even be tests that you don't envision. Teams get better, teams um, right. as the season goes on. It is still a short sample size to just assume everybody's good, assume everybody's bad after two games. I think the Giants will be a clear indication of that. Um, I still don't think they're going to be a good team, um, and Brian Dayball deserves credit for getting them over the hump uh, twice early in the season, but I'm not going to buy into that for as an example. Um, so, look, they they're playing well, and you know it's time it, it's it's time to say can this team be a significant contender? And I think they can. Um, and by that, I don't mean NFC East. I mean NFC title. Um, but there's a long way to go, um, and. You know, I keep looking at this window. I'm going to jump way ahead, Jody, because we've talked about this window since the offseason. Because if Jalen Hurts keeps playing like this, I mean, forget about your theory of him playing out next year. That's not going to work. Uh, he's going to want some kind of an extension. And then the clock starts. Um, and And Russell Wilson is the best example of this, you know it becomes more difficult to, to build up the rest of the roster when you have to pay the quarterback. So, you know, one of the things we talked about, Howie Roseman's off season, his ability to bring in all these different players that changes uh, when you have to pay the quarterback. So you got to take advantage of this short window um, and, and, and try to make a run. And I think the potential is there. Is there for this year, but uh, let me give you one more. We don't really know yet. We've already thrown a couple of those out there. Um, the Eagles, under Jeffrey Lurie's ownership, under Harry Roseman's general managership, have been able to get their quarterback deals done when they wanted or needed to get their quarterback deals done. But we've got a whole new ball game here, and his name is Deshaun Watson, who the Philadelphia Eagles wanted in the worst way and just couldn't get to convince him to come here to Philadelphia, but he's kind of thrown everything into a tizzy. You know, Bashotti is willing to pay down there in Baltimore. You know, they like Lamar Jackson down there in Baltimore. Why shouldn't they? He was great in a loss just this past Sunday against Baltimore. They can't get a deal done. Why? Because they don't want to reproduce the Deshaun Watson contract. Yeah. And Lamar's drawing his uh, line in the sand and saying, Oh, no, I'm every bit the player Deshaun Watson is, and I haven't assaulted anybody, sexually assaulted anybody. You better believe I want every last guaranteed dollar that he got. And the Ravens haven't been able to get that contract done. We don't know how Howie Roseman and, and Jeff Flory are going to deal with uh, uh, Jalen Hurts if he says, yeah, I'm going to kind of need 220 of that uh, $240 million guaranteed. Uh, I, uh, I'm i going to need that same exact thing because what Deshaun Watson, because by the end of the year, we'll know Deshaun Watson has come in and went, how many games is he going to play? Sitting 13? So he's going to play 14, 15, 16, 17. He's going to come in and go 2-2, two and two, and the Browns are going to finish 7-10, and 10, and it's yeah. going to have all gone for naught in year number one. And then Deshaun, uh, uh, Jalen's going to have a sit down and go, Oh, yeah, I, I'm more important to the Philadelphia Eagles than Deshaun Watson is to the Cleveland Browns. So let's start our negotiation there and go from uh, that on. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. It's a very short window, and you have to take advantage of it. And you look at it from that perspective, Jody. 
you know, the NFC East is bad. The NFC isn't as good as the AFC. The stars are aligned. Got to take advantage of this short window. And the Philadelphia Eagles are one of only six teams in the NFL that are 2-0. and we're, we're only two weeks into the season. And we've already cut it down from 32 to 6. I know, week one, we had to cut it from 32 to 16. Actually, we cut it from 32 to 15 because two teams tied. Uh, but we are down to just six teams that are 2-0. and And one of them is the Philadelphia Eagles. Our next guest is jumping in to talk about the birds with us. You listen to him when you go down the shore from 97.3 ESPN, the Sports Bash. Mike Gill going to jump aboard here on Birds 365. 